Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I hope you all are well. So recently we hit a milestone on the Spotify where we reached over a million total plays. This is the first episode and what'll be a series of videos outlining the steps I take to release a song and how those numbers might have happened. This is gonna be centered around releasing singles because I think that's the best way to build an audience on Spotify right now. This information is based on a lot of research I've done over the past couple years, but mainly on personal experience, trying a lot and failing also a lot. <laughs> when I first started releasing music on Spotify and uploading outside of SoundCloud, I really had no idea how to go about doing it and it took a really long time for me to fill in those gaps. And there is a lot of good information on the internet, but I found that a lot of the advice given felt really gimmicky or had a really bad return on investment in terms of time and money and was just generally soul sucking. So I'm hoping that this video can fill in some gaps that you guys have and be the video that I wish I had seen like three years ago. Keep in mind, this is a very personal process. Everybody is different in how they like to go about releasing their music, marketing, writing a song, but I find that anecdotes in this industry are really all we have. And importantly, there will always be a good amount of luck associated with releasing music how well the music actually does. It is very much a game of probabilities. So these techniques just increase the probability that the song does well. Distro Kid Ad. Since releasing music already has so many uncertainties, you want a distribution platform that'll deal with a lot of the issues for you, which is where this video sponsor comes in and my personal favorite distribution platform, Distro Kid. <laughs> We've talked about them a bunch already on this channel, but last year they released a bunch of things that I think are noteworthy on top of their already super user-friendly platform. For example, you can choose a song to be submitted to one of their Spotify playlists and then people can upvote the song. You have access to use Spotify Canvas, the thing on Spotify where you pull up the now playing page and there's like a little video thing. It makes you look way more professional and is an awesome addition to the multimedia version of the release. They also have a bunch of new tools to help build promotional content for the release, which I found to be really difficult at first. And their tool Vizzy lets you make visualizers for the music where like the little EQ thing moves to the beat in the visual. It's really cool. I never knew how to do that. Now you can do it. If this sounds cool, to you visit https colon slash slash distrokid.com slash vip slash butthole to get seven percent off your first year and help support the channel <laughs> i'm starting to regret that name <laughs> link in the description okay let's get back into it in today's episode of how i got to a million streams we're going to be talking about common characteristics of songs that do well on streaming platforms firstly i think it is extremely important to make music that you think sounds good that you like because at the end of the day that is the first reference you have as to whether or not a song is good however there are some common patterns that streaming services especially spotify seem to love that are good to keep in mind when releasing a song we're going to be talking about three of them today that i see a lot of people missing out on and i like to focus on quite a bit in my own music, which are starting strong, repetition, and length of a song. Okay, firstly, start strong. So you need to get the listener's attention within the first four bars of a song, preferably within the first second. You can interpret this advice however you want, but keep in mind that the most interesting instrument to humans is the human voice. So I highly recommend introducing some sort of vocal element as soon as possible. This is great for algorithms, but it's also really cool. I think cold opening with vocals is awesome. Secondly, repetitions. Humans love recognition recognizing patterns. This is our shit, so give us patterns to recognize. Normally you're working on a song because you have something in there that inspires you. Repeat that. It can be a sound, a structure, a beat, but more recognizably, and I think more importantly, it's probably going to be melody or lyrics. So I recommend repeating your favorite melody that you've written in the song or your favorite lyric that you've written in the song because using something that's as grabbing as a melody or a lyric lets you change the more traditionally repeated elements like a structure or a chord progression, leading to really interesting track while still giving the listener something to hold on to. Also, by repeating a melody or a lyric, it gives the song an overarching theme, like a motive, like a motif. <laughs> it gives the song an overarching theme or motif, kind of almost like a film score. Going further with this, I would also recommend making your melodies more repetitive. A lot of genres, even that love complexity like jazz, will often use much simpler melodies in their refrains. So next time you're writing a melody, try limiting yourself to just three notes that just differ in patterns and rhythms. It can produce really catchy results. Let me know how it goes. <laughs> an important caveat kind of on the other side of this is if you have an element repeating through an entire song, whether 
whether it be a chord progression, a melody, uh, an instrument, it is extremely important to cut that out at times. Even if it's a really good element, taking a break from it and then bring it back in will make it all the more satisfying. A common sentiment I have when I've found a melody or just a part of a song I really like is to sit on it and repeat it over and over again because I just, I just want to keep hearing it. However, a good idea for streams and I think a better idea for song quality in general is to not do that. <laughs> if the idea is actually good, people will go back and listen to it again and again instead of you providing it. So for personal context, all of my most played songs over 100,000 plays are under two minutes 30, and my most played song is one minute 50. And the hook repeats three times, once as a bridge section. So in some elements like lyric and melody, there's a lot of repetition, but in structure it changes, and then in length it is actually quite short, so it doesn't really get old. For live shows, for example, having longer songs is actually really nice it lets people kind of get into the groove of things and go on an experience with you but in the streaming sphere i would highly recommend keeping your songs under three minutes it's a better challenge for structure and theme so I was originally just gonna do the video talking about the techniques, but I thought it would be much better to actually show you an example of how I've done this in the past. So we're gonna be looking at my track Winter today because it's one of my favorite songs I have out right now. And I think it has some good examples of the techniques I was talking about earlier, as well as it having done quite well algorithmically. So we talked about starting strong. So Winter, it just starts out with vocals and guitar. This intro originally had a lot more vocals around it, some oohs and ahs, and also trombones, weirdly. But I ended up stripping it all back I found that the just guitar and voice was much more grabbing and then provided a nice progression throughout the song of a general low energy, high energy, but slowly rising throughout the song. So we started with this. I hope you're happy, like the way you see. All the guitars on this song are recorded with this mic and um, my little Marshall practice amp, which was kind of a problem at first because I didn't have a mic that was working at the time, but it ended up actually proving to have some nice effects about it, which we'll get into later. Talk about the future. Smell the sun. No tuning, just a bunch of processing, which I'm sure you guys have probably noticed. It's a little off key. I wanted it to sound raw and human. And just on a lyrical note, if you're having trouble writing lyrics or finding a melody to a certain part of the song, something that helps me is, let's say you've been starting on the one of the measure, like where the guitar starts playing, try starting a couple beats before or a couple beats after, and that can lend itself to some melodies that you wouldn't have thought of otherwise. That's how the Como hook came about and the Airports hook, and I'm pretty sure this intro. And since the intro is so simple, it leaves a lot of room to add more stuff in as the song goes on and have it progress, and so now, We'll get into the repetition element of this song. This song has a ton of repeating elements in it. After recording the first part of this video, I went and looked up the name for a repeating melody or phrase in classical music, especially when it's done by multiple instruments, and it's called ostinato, which is just a repeating melody or phrase by one voice. In this song, what repeats is this stringy mallet line at the beginning. And so that line repeats at different sections throughout the song. First in the intro, it's the first element that comes in after the guitar and vocals. But then that melody happens again with a different instrument. It gives the melody a different vibe, voice, and emotion when it's run by different instruments. Here it's a very subtle difference. It just adds a little bit more variety than it would otherwise, and then they come together at the end. And then my favorite thing that repeats is these I don't want you to leave me alone vocals. And that, oh my god, the mix is whack. That just happens throughout the end of this first little hook section and then three times as the song goes. It's just, a, I think, a beautiful transitionary phrase that just happened kind of on accident. And then lastly, the guitars. This intro guitar, very simple. It's just the root notes of the chords, but that's the only time that happens. And then after that, it's just different versions of these hook guitars. Here's where a lot of the weirdness begins. So you can hear right here that like Dana is just like the mic doing weird stuff and then this one as well. And then some power chords. And these ones, the amp and mic had a really weird dynamic where it sounds like there's a noise gate on this mic by default and it just started quieting it down.
And it's cool because it was super annoying at first, but it actually gave it kind of a vibe. And then the lead melody, which I'm also very happy with. And then all together, it's just really nice and pretty. So all of those repeating elements kind of come together to form this hook-esque element in between these lower energy verse elements. So the way this song progresses structurally is also in a very repetitive fashion. Intro, very low energy. The second verse has a guitar, some drums in it, so it's building a little bit. And then the third verse, I think, drops quite a bit, but still is interesting as it adds in that guitar lead. Move out to the hills where you can see and then, of course, the drums and the 808 and the hook also repeat in these hook sections, and so all together they sound like this. And so that continues with a lot of the themes of the song, but still adds a variety and dynamics and energy to then come in with the most kind of powerful ending of the song where not only are you repeating the structure and a lot of those other melodic elements, but you're bringing in more vocal layers and I'm repeating the vocals I just said to add more purpose to them. I find when lyrics are repeated, it adds meaning to me, at least as a listener. Those last lyrics meant a lot to me, writing them so I wanted to make sure that we got that point across. And then lastly, I want to talk about length. This song having the repetitive nature that it does, where not only is the structure repeating, but a lot of the melodic elements are repeating as well. It's really important to not let it get boring. So if I kind of drag the song out longer, even put in a bridge, I feel like a lot of this would have lost impact and momentum. So if we have a short repetitive song with a really good melody, oftentimes what will happen is you want to go back and listen to that song. I like to think of it as like the difference between like a TV show that's gone on too long versus like Avatar The Last Airbender, right? Three seasons. Perfection. They ended it. I want more. This is okay. I've watched the TV show like four times. It's incredible. Whereas a lot of other shows kind of fall off slowly. I think it's also important to note that while I'm giving these tips as if I planned this from the beginning, this was a very additive process and took months to complete. I was having a lot of trouble getting past this first drop here and what to do in the second verse. What I'm trying to say is that it's way easier said than done. You know, adding repetition and finding these motifs, writing lyrics you like, all of this took months. It doesn't have to take months, it can happen in 30 minutes. If you're having trouble, it's okay. Sometimes it happens very quickly and that's awesome and sometimes it happens really slowly and that's also awesome because then you get to see this saga of your life come together into a song you don't hate. So <laughs> that's important. I, think. I hope that was a nice addition to the theory that we kind of went into before. And those are all the characteristics we're going to go over for today. There are infinitely many other things we could talk about, and we might go into that in the future. Let me know what you want me to talk about, if you want me to do any breakdowns of songs or any other questions you have. So yeah, I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you guys like this type of video or if you don't. And if you want me to talk about anything in particular, drop that in the comments. If you want to come hang out and be a more involved part of the community, come to the Discord. It's filled with lovely people and the link is in the description so feel free to click away and remember if you want to help support the channel and get seven percent off your first year of DistroKid click the link in the description to go sign up there and yeah that's it I hope you guys have a wonderful day take a walk go drink some water uh straight straighten out your back I'm Bryce and thank you for being part of my life oh my god my legs oh I need to do more yoga and then it happens in the hook by And then it happens in the hook from Oh my god